This video is going to walk through the Fireboard Pulse, everything you need to know. Fireboard Pulse is our new dual band wireless probe. And the point of this video is to give everybody just a little bit of a deeper dive as to the product features, how it works, what's in the box, how it pairs with the Fireboard app, and how it pairs with other Fireboard devices, and really how you use the Fireboard Pulse. So this is really designed to be slightly more in depth. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check out the Fireboard Pulse actually in its box and really show everybody how this all works from the very beginning, which is taking it out of the box. And this is just like you would receive it. And there's really not a whole lot to it. You'll find a USB-C cable for charging and then you'll find the Fireboard Pulse itself. And what, what you'll see immediately, the Fireboard Pulse is resting on the charger. So we basically have two things here, right? We have the Fireboard Pulse itself, which is the probe, and then we have the charger. And the charger itself has a built-in battery. So the charger can recharge the Fireboard Pulse about 20 times. It depends on whether the Pulse is fully depleted or not. But the first thing you'll want to do, you'll notice on the back side of the Pulse, there's actually a little sticker and so you want to peel this sticker off. This prevents it from charging in the box. And then you want to charge the pulse and you can start to see there are some flashing red lights and that basically means that the pulse is actively charging. Once you see that flashing red light disappear, that means that the pulse is fully charged. Now, it's worth mentioning the charger is designed in such a way you can actually stack multiple chargers on top of each other. So here we have two of them stacked together. So it's a really slick feature. And then you can also see we actually have USB, we have a little battery pack here, but we're plugged into the USB-C port on the charger. And you can tell now what's happening is the chargers are charging. So we've got chargers charging the pulse, and then we have a battery pack charging the chargers. Um, and so you can stack, I think it's you can stack up to six or seven of these devices all on top of each other. And you can tell they immediately power up just through the magnet connection themselves, which is pretty slick. And the top, the top charger here is actually fully charged, so it turns green. The others are still charging, they're on red. So once the pulse is on here, it takes about 10 minutes for a full charge. When we say full charge, that really just means about 90% charge. If you want to get it 100% charge, you have to leave it on here for several hours. But about 10 minutes is going to get you most of the way there, and that's going to be good for a good 20, 25 hours of the cook. So it charges really fast. That's because there's a really, really small battery inside the pulse. So just pop this off the charger, and then what's going to happen is if you have your Fireboard app open, and I'll show everyone here with the screen recording, um, try to do this as I'm actually going here, but you can see the screen recording live here as I'm doing it, and I'll show you the Fireboard app, and then there should be a notification that pops up, so you'll take the, the pulse off the charger, and it immediately pops up because it connects over Bluetooth, and you can just add that pulse to your Fireboard account. So now you have whatever Fireboard devices you already had in your account. Additionally, you have the Fireboard pulse that you just added as well. And then of course, immediately once you take the pulse off the charger, the pulse is actually sending temperature data. And you can click on your dashboard and you can see immediately we already have temperature data coming through. Of course, we're here in our studio here in Kansas City, and it's about 75 degrees. So you have an internal ambient sensor in this region right here. And then you have an external sensor kind of in this ceramic. And the, the external ambient sensor is right inside of this. So you really have two temperatures that you're getting transmitted from the pulse to the Fireboard app. Um, it's worth noting as well it's a little hard to see, but there is a little bit of a laser etching on this stainless steel tube. 
And this, this line is really to show you how far you should insert the pulse into a piece of meat just to make sure that it's fully insulated. All the electronics are basically in this section of the fireboard pulse. So you wanna make sure it's in far enough that those electronics are gonna stay relatively cool. So that's the fireboard pulse. That's the fireboard pulse charger. And of course, you're able to see different pulses stacked together, which is, which is a nice feature too. I'm gonna to walk you through the Fireboard app just a little bit, but first, I do wanna make just a quick note of how our connectivity works. There's really three ways to connect. You can connect the Fireboard Pulse directly to the Fireboard app, which is exactly what we just did here. You can also connect the Pulse to other Fireboard devices via Bluetooth. And so here I have Fireboard 2. Fireboard 2 has a Bluetooth receiver, so you can actually connect the pulse to the Fireboard 2. We have our Spark, the instant read thermometer. The Spark has a built-in Bluetooth receiver, so you can connect your pulse to the Spark. There's other products we have, um, Yoder pellet smokers. We have our other pellet smokers that are connected. All of those can connect to uh, the, the Fireboard Pulse via Bluetooth. The third way of connecting is with this S1G antenna. The S1G antenna, S1G is really our way of describing this lower frequency. So it's sub one gigahertz, so it's 900 megahertz. And what happens is uh, this antenna can actually get plugged into and it connects directly to the Fireboard 2 and now what you're doing is you're basically transforming the Fireboard 2 into a base station where it can receive those low frequency signals, 900 megahertz signals. And now it can talk directly to the pulse, but in a much longer range, right? So if you're using the Fireboard pulse inside of a really thick metal cooker or smoker, it's really nice to have that really strong low frequency signal, which can get through those metal walls. So that's, in a nutshell, how the connectivity works. Again, one thing to check out is our knowledge base at docs.fireboard.io, where we've tried to really encapsulate every single thing that we could think of with all of our products, and that way people can go check out if they have questions. Um, there's some Q&As, there's some FAQs, um, best practices, and that's, our, that's again, knowledge base docs.fireboard.io, so check that out. We'll have the link also down below in this video. So I do wanna get into the Fireboard app, and I'll show you guys how this works. Um, the, the pulse, so in this case, I added a, a red pulse, and it's, it's maybe a little hard to see, but we have a, there's a red Teflon coating. We have six colors all in all. We have, here's a, there's a green, and a yellow. We also have orange and we have blue. And so the last one is stainless steel, which doesn't have any coating. It's literally just a stainless steel color. This is sort of like the default color. Most, most people probably will order a stainless steel pulse to start with. It still cleans up, it's very robust. The stainless steel can actually withstand a pretty high temperature. Um, a little bit, little bit higher than this Teflon coating. Um, I think we can go up over 800 degrees just for, I think, two or three minutes on the stainless steel, which is really nice. If you're searing a steak, you can actually go a little bit higher temperature with a stainless steel. The Teflon coating you have to be a little bit careful with, um, just because the Teflon itself will burn, but it goes up to about, I think, 570 degrees. That's 570 Fahrenheit, about 350 Celsius. Okay, so here we have the Pulse. Um, I've paired it to the app as you guys watched me do. And then just to do a quick walkthrough on the app, what you're seeing here is you're seeing the internal and the external temperature of the Fireboard Pulse. And this is creating a session automatically. And so as soon as you start sending data to the Fireboard app, this is creating a session on the Fireboard cloud. And as everybody knows who's familiar with Fireboard, you're able to see all of your data on the Fireboard cloud anywhere in the world, right? So if you have the Fireboard Pulse sending data through a Fireboard or any other device, 
that's viewable if you're down the street, if you're across town, you can actually watch your cook on the phone. So I will look at session data, which it actually makes a nice little chart. It shows you all of your temperature data, which is live. And it shows you all of your, potentially your historical cooks and your historical temperature data as well. And the summary view is where you can actually see the name of your device. You can see the battery level. You can see actually how it's connected. So it shows you the signal strength. And then you can actually configure alerts. For example, if I want to set a high temperature alert, let's say, you know, I'll set it at 40 degrees and we can get, we can choose between notifications. We can choose email. We can choose SMS text. So if you configure your phone number, so we give people different ways to set up alerts. So I've kind of set up a very simple alert. It kind of shows you what that set point is. And, and by the way, as it's kind of coming through, the pulse sends data every minute. So it'll refresh temperature data about every 60 seconds. Um, if, you're, if temperatures are changing rapidly, if you're cooking a steak hot and fast, that frequency will kind of dynamically increase. So you actually get more frequent temperature updates with the pulse. We've kind of built in some of that smart technology to adapt. So as the temperature is changing rapidly, it's going to send data more rapidly, but the default sending frequency is one minute. And um, one other point to call out here is there are some device settings itself. You can change the device name. Right now it default adds pulse red. You can actually go in here and change the device name. You can change settings from Celsius to Fahrenheit and you can configure all that. The other thing to note is if I go back to the channel settings, by default, we're actually now, the color of the pulse is basically the color that you're seeing the graph in the Fireboard app. And you can change that color. I can change this to green. And so now all of a sudden, what you see on the graph, once this kind of refreshes, you'll see a green line on the graph instead of the red line. So. That in a nutshell is how the Fireboard app works. Um, we'll get into probably having a separate video. And again, check out down below for all the videos that kind of relate to the Fireboard Pulse. We'll have a video that talks about how to use Pulse with Drive. So that's a super popular feature. We know people used to love Fireboard Drive and Drive is our temperature control. So if you want to connect to a, a Primo, a Green Egg, a ceramic, um, Kamado smoker or maybe even like a wood or charcoal where you have a, a fan that actually maintains the fire for you just to maintain that really steady set point. That's what we call fireboard drive. And so what we've done is with Pulse, this wireless probe, we now allow you to run and control based off this external ambient temperature. So with one probe, you don't have to run any wires at all you can actually just have this in the meat. You're gonna be getting your meat temperature, obviously right from here. Then you're gonna be getting an ambient reading from this section of the probe. So I'll get more into that with maybe another in-depth video with how to use Fireboard Drive. We'll probably do a cook. We'll go ahead and go out on actually one of our, our cookers here in Kansas City at our headquarters and maybe show you guys how it works. Um, the short answer is it works really well. It's fun to use because you don't have to like attach a bunch of wires and do that whole setup. Um, so more to come on that. But in a nutshell, we kind of want to show you guys how the Fireboard Pulse connects, what's in the box, how the product works. But check out everything, docs.fireboard.io. Shoot us an email at info at fireboard.com. Thanks for watching.